The name of the message today is a clog in the pipe. We've just read Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Imagine you've been working out in the heat of the day, in the dust, all day long. I think it's coming up, Brother Goodwin. You're going to be doing some haying in a little while. If anybody's ever done haying, they know what joy that is. Oh, man. <laughs> think about it. Perhaps baling hay. You're out there <coughs> covered in sweat. The hay is dry and dusty and scratchy. The dust and the dirt sticks to you. When the hay bales come off of that baler, you got to sling them up onto the wagon. The, folk on, the folks on the wagon stacking it. It's getting all over. You put it into the barn. Of course, you got to put it into the highest, hottest, nastiest part of the barn. There's no airflow, and you're stacking it up there sometimes off of a off of an elevator and you're, you're throwing um, the bales on, you're throwing the bales off. And I remember doing this for Uncle Richard and this would be an all day project. Just slinging bales of hay. Every part in your body hurt. The one thing that you were looking forward to is a good drink of water a lot of drink of water, and a shower. You would move, and every moving part in your body would crack because you are like a um, piece of chicken that has been rolled in, uh, uh, in breading. And uh, you are ready to remove the breading. So you get ready, and you're so ready for that shower. I mean, you're going to set it not very hot this time. You're going to have it a little bit cool, and you can imagine what a relief it is. So you get ready for the shower, and you get uh, in there, and you remove all the dusty clothes, and you step in. And you turn on the water, and you get one drip. And nothing comes out. The refreshing, cleansing water isn't coming. There's a clog in the pipe. Does the, geez, just that concept make you feel a little itchy? A little uncomfortable? Man, I bet you'd want to get rid of that clog right now. Let's go into another situation. Similar one. You're outside working in the yard. Hot day, 90, 95. You're mowing. You're gardening. You're working. Finally, it's come time to come inside and at least get a drink of water. You've been pushing through, working hard, and trying to get the work done, but you've been probably thinking for the last hour or so just how good that cool drink of water is going to be. Now, you weren't really paying much attention to the fact that up the road, there's been all kinds of utility trucks going up the road. There were fire trucks up there too, and there was a steady stream of water coming down the road. Oh, they were working on the um, on the hydrants. Hadn't really thought about that much, but I'm looking forward to that drink of water. I can't wait. My mouth is set, and I don't need anything else. Just cool water. And you know what? 
I like it in our house, and I don't know what it is, but it seems like every house I go into, if you go into the bathroom, the bathroom sink, that water seems to be colder. I don't know why. So you turn on the water, and instead of that cool, refreshing, life-sustaining flow, you have a thick, stringy stream of black goo. The smell that comes from that black goo does not smell like drinking water. There's a clog in the pipe. Are you getting the picture now that clog in the pipe is a bad thing? It's a disappointing thing. Could be, if that was your only source, a life-threatening thing. This same kind of thing can happen to us spiritually. We slog through a day in a parched, sin-cursed world. Our soul yearns to be quenched by the water of the Word. Our spirit longs to be cleansed by the washing of the water of the Word. Our being needs the flow of the grace of God. As we go to the faucet of the grace of God, and we open it up looking for God's grace, something's wrong. The grace doesn't flow. There's a clog in the pipe. I want you to keep your finger here, and I want to show you the concept that I'm trying to teach today. And we're going to go back to Mark, but I want you to keep your finger here in Mark and go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Are you there? All right. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Grace, sustaining grace, saving grace, the grace of God, God's riches at Christ's expense, God's enablement, God's restoration, God's cleansing, God's quenching of a parched soul is grace. The Bible tells us that according to Romans chapter 5 and verse 2, grace is accessed through a pipe. That pipe is faith. We have access to God's sustaining grace through the pipe of faith. Oh, man, I want to get saved. How do I get saved? I, I need to access saved by grace. Saved by grace through? Through faith. Saved by grace through faith. Oh, when I believe the grace of God, God's riches at Christ's expense, flows. I get saved. Cool. But that doesn't, that's not where it ends. Now, I'm living in a sin-cursed world. I got to go through every day. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I have access to grace. I ask for deliverance. Sometimes I get deliverance. That's a form of grace. I ask for deliverance from a particular thing, and I don't get deliverance, but I get the ability to go through the valley. What is that? Sustaining grace. How do I access this wonderful, refreshing flow of sustaining grace? Through the pipeline of faith. In our passage today, flip back to Mark chapter 6, we have an interesting contrast of what's been happening. In Mark chapter 5, 
we read about God's great miracle working power through Jesus. I mean, we've been seeing um, miracle after miracle and great crowds and an incredible reception. Man, we, the, the demoniac was, uh, was healed and 2,000 demons cast out of one guy into a flock of pigs. Are they flocks? I don't know. Herd, okay. A herd of pigs. Wow, fantastic. Everywhere. People follow Jesus. People follow Jesus day and night. They just wanted to be with him. They wanted to see the power. They wanted to see the miracles. Um, uh, folks were getting healed all over the place. The, the, the fame was going everywhere. A, a woman came to him uh, who had a, a private problem and, and got healing. Man, this is great. A woman, a 12-year-old girl, raised from the dead. The power of God just everywhere. And you know what? Well, the power of God was the grace of God. It was God's riches that were being flowing openly everywhere Christ went. Now Jesus does something that I think we all struggle with. We've talked about giving the gospel to folks, and I had a question on Bible Answers last week. Somebody said, why is it so difficult? I can give the gospel everywhere until I go to my family. Jesus went now to his home area where he was raised. And there was a whole different response. The Bible says that he couldn't do many mighty, he couldn't do what mighty works at all. He healed a few sick folks. But great, you know, earth shattering, window rattling power of God it didn't happen. Do you think that was because there was no need? No. People were just as thirsty, just as dirty, needed the cleansing flow of the grace of God, but there was a clog in the pipe. The grace of God didn't flow. The miracles didn't happen. Have you ever had that happen in your life? Have you ever been to that place where, whether it be the cleansing grace of God, the sustaining grace of God, the delivering grace of God, and you go to the faucet and you say, well, it's about time. I really need, I need a drink. Man, it's about time. I really need to get clean. Man, it's about time. I really need the flow of grace in my family. When you go to that pipeline, you go to that spigot, and you open it up, and drip. Well, you open it up, and what comes out isn't grace. And you just say, what happened? And you say, oh! There must be a problem with God. No. No more than there's a problem with the water. There's a problem with your pipe. There's a problem with the flow. There's a clog in the pipe. In this passage, it's instructive. We find three types of clogs here. We're going to look at it very briefly. The way to identify these clogs, you know, there's different types of clogs, and uh, um, when you identify these clogs, then you know how to fix them. So let's look at it for just a minute. I will tell you that I had the 
unfortunate um, experience of having to help dad when we had clogs in our pipe. I tell you, I really like the way we handle clogs in our pipe at our house a lot better. We uh, get bottles of Drano and you dump it in there and let it do its work and you're done. Amen. I, I like it like that. But my dad, no, we had to go in the basement. We'd go in this crawl space that was covered in dirt and spiders. And, oh, I didn't like that job. And we did these big long pieces of pipe. We'd have to take them out. And then dad would uh, make, take uh, hangers, the, the, the real hangers, you know, the ones with the wire. And he'd straighten it out, put it in a drill, and then put that, uh, that hanger uh, wire going down into the drill, or going down into the pipe, and run that drill as a hanger wire would go all the way down through that pipe, and then he would flush the pipe out. And all manner of evil came out of those pipes. But you know what? Then the water would flow. In those cases, it was flowing out, not flowing in. Clogs in a pipe of grace grow from doubt, unbelief. We need to identify the clog and remove it. First clog. Where am I? Go to Mark chapter 6 and verse 2. When the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? The first thing that was happening is there was a a questioning. It was a questioning of Christ's wisdom. It was a questioning of Christ's word. One of the doubts that can start to clog the pipeline of grace is when you start to look at the Bible and say, I'm not really sure it means that. I'm not sure I can trust this passage. I'm not sure that it really means what it says it means. Yeah, but it looks pretty plain. Yeah, but I don't like what it says, it, what it says so I'm sure I'm missing something. It's got to mean something else. Folks started with Jesus and saying, listen, I know his mom and dad. I know his sisters. And it was brothers. And they were astonished. I love uh, how um, a Greek scholar named Mr. Wiest uh, explained it. He said in the, in the English, the word would be flabbergasted. I just think that's a cool word. But, oh, really? It's, it's actually, it's something that, that is like, we would say today, blown away. Whoa! And not in a good way blown away. Not like, whoa, that's great, but where do you get off with all that? Now, they weren't saying that it didn't seem to be wise. They weren't saying uh, that they could find logical holes in it. But they were saying, I don't think I can go with the source here because I know you. Well, familiarity does breed contempt, doesn't it? You know, you go to your unsaved relatives and, and you can give them the gospel and you can give them the truth. And one of the things that will clog the pipeline of grace and keep them from getting saved is they'll hear the words of God, but see you and say, wait a minute. I, 
I'm not going to believe that. I'm not going to believe the source. And again, you go back to using the word. Now, now, what do you do if you have a clog in the pipe and the clog is, I don't believe the Bible, or I question its validity here? Well, some people, you know, and, and, and of course Facebook is, is great for putting that garbage out there. Uh, you know, the, the, the garbage about, well, you know, you got a whole bunch of different people uh, all the time. Uh, and they so many different hands, and we don't really know what was ever originally written, and we don't know what's really out there, and it's translated uh, d different languages, and it's passed on and recopied, and there were probably about 80 other Gospels that should have been included, but it was kept out by a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, uh, male chauvinists and, and stuff, and so we really don't know much about the Bible, and so we could get into, oh, I got to repair this clock. So let me, let me study up on uh, how to defeat the um, Da Vinci Code type arguments. Let me get way deep in the, in the woods here, way deep in the weeds uh, with, with uh, the theory of uh, canonical inspiration and all of that. We could do that. Essentially, like my dad, getting under into that crawl space and digging those pipes out. We could do that. But what clogs, or what fixed clogs? I found something interesting. We've had clogs at our house that have had uh, to have uh, professional attention and uh, when the rooter guys come in guess what they do they run that snake but guess what else they do when they run the snake what what else do they do they run water you know what the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God what do you do with someone who's clogged up they don't believe the Bible keep giving them the Bible. You run that faucet wide open. Blast out the clog of unbelief. Yourself, you're reading the Bible and you say, I'm not sure I believe it. And you can feel the flow of grace in your life being staunched. What do you do? Turn that spigot wide open and let the word of God flow into there. Blast those clogs of doubt right out. Listen, if we just dribble the water of the word into our life, no wonder the sludge of the world gets stuck in our pipes. Listen, blast it through. Open it up. Let the clog be fixed with the water of the word. How about another one? Going back to verse 2. From whence hath this man these things? What wisdom, and what wisdom is, uh, which, is that which, this which is given unto him? Even such mighty works are wrought by his hand. What's the source of his power? Now this is the questioning of the validity of miracles. The, first of all, did God do it or did Satan do it? That was a question that was done. But also, did it really happen? Did I really see what I saw? And that's really the, what happens a lot today, doesn't it? Where you'll start to read through and, and you'll read about these miracles. And you'll read about God having folks cross over the Red Sea. Two million Jews cross over the Red Sea. God held up the Red Sea. And you say, whoa, that's so cool. And then you watch the History Channel and they say, well, it was not really the Red Sea. It was this little 
puddle off to the north, and it was dry. So they kind of slogged through in ankle-deep water. By the way, ankle-deep water isn't dry land, amen? Because every word's important. That goes back to position number one, doubting the words. Heard an old preacher. He was reading through in the subway. Praise the Lord! What are you reading about? The agnostic says, God delivers people through the Red Sea. Don't you understand? It wasn't really all that. It was just ankle deep water. And he's reading some more. All of a sudden he breaks out again. Praise the Lord! He said, what are you praising the Lord about now? He said, well, apparently God drowned a whole Egyptian army in ankle deep water. You know what? When you're looking at the Bible, when you start to say, well, I'm not sure it happened like that, or you start to say, well, let me find out some scientific answer to it, why they thought it happened that way, you're going to get your pipes clogged. What do you need? More water. And prayer. Ask God for power, he'll give power. The last question is the biggest one. In Mark chapter 6, verse 3, is this not the carpenter? The son of Mary and the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon are not his sisters here with us. And they were offended at him. The word offended means they were repulsed. They were repulsed. They were repelled. I don't want to have anything to do with him. Why? Because folks were saying Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior. They doubted who he really was. Listen, there are plenty of folks that are cool with you being a Christian, understanding, yes, he was a great teacher. Understanding, yeah, he was the original homeless hippie. Going around preaching, preaching peace all the time and upsetting the establishment. Did he preach peace? Yes. Did he uh, uh, upset the establishment? Sure he did. But that's not the essence of who he was. The essence of who he was is he is the Messiah, very God in the flesh, and he died because, and rose again because there's not a thing that you and I could do in order to get to heaven. It had to be through him. 